Welcome back. I am at my other little lake. This one's actually a bit bigger. And this is normally where I come to sail. I've been doing a lot of sailing lately, getting ready for something that I'm doing in November. Uh, but today I want to talk about uh, feathering or not feathering your paddle. In a video that I posted a couple weeks ago, um, there's a shot of me switching my paddle from flat to feathered. And flat is when the blades are parallel to each other. Feathered is when one blade is offset. Uh, and someone made a comment in the video that I thought was uh, super accurate and on the money. And I'll, I'll, I'll post what that comment was in just a minute. But for now, let's sort of talk about the differences between flat and feathered and where feathering comes from. <laughs> And so the downside of being in this world, as long as I've been in this world, the world of paddling and outdoor education, is I start to forget where I learn things. And so I'm going to tell you what I remember as being the origin of paddle feathering. Uh, but if I'm wrong, someone comment down below because I could be wrong. I tried to do a, a search to see to back up what I remember and can't find anything real. So the first thing to understand is that the origins of sea kayaking comes from natives in Greenland and natives in the Aleutian Islands at about the same time, uh, between four and 5,000 years ago. Yes, you heard me correctly, four or 5,000 years ago. That's how old sea kayaking is. And if you look at Greenland paddles or Aleutian style paddles, they are flat. Um, they are, some people refer to Greenland paddles as Greenland sticks because they're just made out of wood and they just taper from the middle out a little bit wider. Uh, but they are a flat paddle. They are not feathered. So as I understand it, feathering came around in the 1970s in whitewater kayaking. Uh, and it started so that people that were doing kayaking races, particularly slalom races, um, were less likely to have their blade in the air hit a gate and thereby give them a time penalty. Uh, so that may be inaccurate, but I remember learning that someplace along the line. Quick sidebar. Here's your quick sidebar. Uh, bent shaft paddles also come from whitewater kayaking and were not originally about being easier on your joints. They're now called neutral bent because they're supposed to be easier on your joints. Uh, 20 years ago, when I got fitted for my first paddle by a Warner rep, uh, he put me in a 220 flat uh, paddle, uh, no bend shaft. And I said, what, no bend shaft, nothing like that? He's like, no, that's white water. Don't worry about it. Uh, so a lot of the things that we think are sea kayaking are white water, and a lot of them are not for the reasons we've been told to do them. Take everything with a grain of salt even what I'm saying. Okay, so back from sidebar, if paddles are historically for sea kayaking flat, why do we feather? Well, a lot of people, and I don't know where this started, think if you're paddling a sea kayak, you should be feathered. And I see novices all the time paddling with like a 90 degree feather. Uh, I, I don't know where that came from. Again, if you have info as to where that came from, put something down below. But there's sort of like this, oh, if you're paddling a sea kayak, you need to be paddling feathered. And I think any sort of dogma like that is wrong. I paddle flat for one reason. Uh, and the one reason is that I don't want to add the extra movements of my wrist uh, on each paddle stroke. Now, some people say, and I've read this in various books, that if you're paddling feathered correctly, there is less movement of your wrist because of the way your arms are moving. You can control it there. I think that's crazy talk. I've only ever done a slight bend of my wrist to get that paddle in the right place when it goes in the water. So 90% of the time, I paddle flat, except for when conditions are like this. So when it's blowing at 10 or 15 or 20 knots and I'm going paddling, um, if I'm paddling with the wind, so the wind is at my back, I'll leave my paddle flat um, because at that point, that blade that's in the air, 
that blade that is in the air is actually catching a little bit of wind and giving me a little bit of a push, as is wind on my back giving me a little bit of a push. This situation, I wanna be paddling flat because I want that wind to give me that little push. But the real problem is when you're paddling into the wind, the wind is hitting this blade that's up in the air. And I don't want that because it's slowing me down. And that is when I feather. Now, the complaint that some people have, and I've had ACA instructors tell me this, is they say they don't care, choose feathered, unfeathered, whatever, it doesn't matter. But whatever you choose, stick with it. Don't be switching back and forth which is exactly what I do. Uh, and their reasoning is this. So I paddle flat most of the time, but right now I'm paddling into a wind. So I'm gonna feather about 40 degrees. And now with each stroke with my right hand, I have to give the paddle a little bit of a twist, but what it's doing is it's keeping the air blade, right, so this blade up here, it's keeping it flatter to the wind, and I could actually even go a little bit more. There's 60 degrees, and that will help that blade slice through the wind. I'm gonna hit a wind line in a second, so I should get a little gust of wind. And so people's concern is that when I go to do a brace, let's do that flat first. So a brace normally would look like this, roll the paddle under, pull it back to you for support, that when I go to do that brace, feathered, that my paddle will not be in the right orientation. It'll be upright and slice down, and I'll go to brace and end up falling in the water. So in a situation where the water is rough or it's windy, and I'm worried that my boat's gonna tip, my support stroke is gonna fail because my paddle is not in the right orientation. That is not a problem I've ever had because I'm aware of the orientation of the paddle based on the, the position and experience, right? And so that works well for me. Brace there, brace there. It doesn't matter that the paddle is feathered. But it, again, this works for me. It might not work for you. Here's a big gust of wind where I really like being feathered. issue with the low brace turn. Do it on the other side. Okay, so you can see the dangers of trying to plant a brace stroke in bad weather, but because you're not used to paddling feathered, the blade comes down like this and just submerges into the water and isn't giving you any sort of actual brace. It hasn't happened to me. I've had good luck with it. I've never had a problem going to plant a brace and having the paddle blade in the wrong orientation. Uh, and so I, I continue to do this, but I will say this is my choice. You need to make your choice as to what's gonna work best for you when you are paddling, particularly in difficult situations. I've been doing this a long time. And by that, I mean, I've been paddling flat except for in bad weather for a long time. So I'm used to it and I've never had an issue with it. That's my choice. I'll deal with the ramifications of that choice. But you need to make your own choice and decide what's going to work for you. Um, Johnny, who I paddle with a lot, I've seen that he does the same thing. When we're paddling into a headwind, he'll switch to feathered. And I, I think that we've talked about it, but and he's aware of those risks and he's made that decision. Uh, and so you need to make that decision for yourself. Let's not have any dogma about sea kayakers have to paddle flat or paddle feathered. Make a choice based on what's most comfortable for you. I choose to not paddle flat most of the time because I don't want that added wear and tear. Um, that the, A number that I talk about a lot is 15,000. Is If you paddle for four hours, you're doing between 50 and 70 paddle strokes a minute. 
and that equates to about 15,000 strokes, which means 15,000 times you're going like that. Well, I guess half the time. So 7,500 times you're going like that. And that's added wear and tear on your wrist that I don't really like. Make a decision, roll with it, uh, and, uh, and own it. And like I do, I'm saying, hey, the ACA says not to do this. I'm doing it anyway. Uh, another one of the reasons why I don't fully agree with the ACA. Uh, if this content is working out for you, hit like, hit subscribe. I really appreciate it. Um, my book, uh, Simple Guide to Kayaking, is available on Amazon. There's a link down below. I'll see you outside.